It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. If we're going to sing, we should went, go to Christmas song. You went song. the whole other way. I was doing a Mr. Rogers. I know, but it just, I thought, Christmas. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up, where we wake up. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. So good to have you with us. I love it. We got a great scripture for your day. We're gonna pray and, over your day. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. And uh, energized. And you know, my teaching. We're still in talking about the rain. Yeah, uh, singing in the rain. But singing you know, in, in the, the rain. rain. We got. You know, oftentimes we find our lives in droughts. Yeah. And uh, just like Elijah did. But the rain is coming, and when the rain comes, it's worth the time in the drought because God always supplies our needs in the midst of the drought. Mm -hmm. And we got into the part of the scripture where Elijah got the rain coming, mm -hmm. got a heavy rain coming. Everything's going great. And Jezebel says, hey, I'm going to kill you, which we know it's just an imitated, in, intimidation. It's just the enemy him. trying to scare trying us. Trying to scare because He's that's his last thing. That. Yeah. So now he runs from the rain. He's a broken man. And we're talking about our expectations. And so our scripture today is going to be in Proverbs chapter 13, uh, verse 12, that expectations deferred makes the heart sick. Yeah. Expectations is a tricky thing. It is. It really is. You know, we live in a world that, that are uh, oftentimes we, we, we find ourselves getting depressed or down because we don't have what I call reasonable expectations. I have high expectations, mm -hmm. but I also, my expectations aren't in here. My expectations are always in God and what his word says. And so it helps me keep up. And I was, I was looking up this word um, deferred. Okay. Uh, because, uh, you know, another, my translation says hope deferred mm -hmm. makes the heart sick. Or here it says your expectations being deferred and deferred is is uh, I'll read it a loan arrangement in which the borrower is allowed to start making payments at some specified time in the future it's a deferred payment which means that uh, when you defer your expectation expectation deferred right. it means you've stopped expecting oh wow do you see that yeah. like hope deferred means it makes the heart sick so people sometimes say well you know their hope got deferred no 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 they deferred their hope right Oh, that's so good, Nobody Jason. made them stop hoping. Right. They just stopped hoping. <laughs> and, 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 and I like the word deferred because it may, it's, it's almost like we make a negotiation with Satan where we say, you know, I, I, I'm just hopeless now. I'll hope later. Right? I, I'm just, I, I don't know. I have a, I, my expectations are all blown apart. Maybe I'll expect later. Right. I'm deferring my I expectation. Defer. I put it off to the future. I'm deferring my hope. But remembering to put your hope and or your expectations, which hope is an expectation. Faith is. is a substance expected. That word yeah. hope there isn't like we use it today. And so having so I expect today to be a great day. Amen. I do. I expect it. But I have a reasonable expectation knowing that my day isn't going to have not a single trouble. No. See, that's where you get wrong, where I think that I'm not going to have any speed bumps. Nothing's, everything's going to go right as a great day. Exactly. That's an unreasonable expectation. No, no. I'm going to win in the end is a right. great expectation. So not everything. Like, I, I'm going to pass through the fire. I'm going to pass through the water. I'm going to go across the river. I'm going to do things that might cause strain and stress and anxiety, right. especially among other people. When you expect the best, you, you, you will alienate yourself away from anxiety. Right. stress. And it's not that nothing bad happened to you. It meant that nothing that nothing that happened to you shook you out of your expectation it that it was still going to be a great day. Oh, that's a really good word. And so Elijah expected all the nation to get saved yeah. <laughs> rather than just expecting, hey, God is going to do something great in the nation through what he's using me for. Yeah. And in God's timing and way, things are going to turn around. See, it's a different expectation. He could have thought to himself, hey, well, I planted a seed. I did all that it's I could. It's going to grow. I did everything. And I, I didn't I turn to God today, but At maybe tomorrow. At the end tomorrow. of the day, I did everything that I could and I know that things are going to go continue to go good tomorrow yeah. I, I and we do that I met with a, a pastor and he was just really down because he had some staff and some people leave and uh, a good friend you know it seemed like he stabbed him in the back okay and he was just discouragement so, so his expectations he's like well here I am and you know I'm building the kingdom and, and I must not be a good leader because you know and I said well let's not forget that Jesus had one out of twelve yeah. 
stab him in the back. Betrayed him. Betrayed him. Yeah. Right? He had Peter all over the place. How about the time he was preaching and it said everyone but his disciples left? Like he was preaching about, <laughs> hey, you know, you're going to have to drink my blood and yeah. eat my body. And then it, the Bible says that everybody left but his own disciples. Right. That was a tough day. Could have been. <laughs> but for Jesus, he's like... <laughs> Did what I'm supposed to do. Just thin in the herd, Just baby. Just thin in the herd. <laughs> and so I said, if Jesus has disciples that and leader, you know, he's, I would say he's probably the best leader. Yeah. And the way I understand the story is that eventually they killed him. <laughs> That's, what That's I the way that. I understand yeah, they, it yeah, when I read it. And then his own disciples even denied him. So you could say, well, he was a terrible leader. Yeah. You know, how to not get Jesus results would be a great leadership book. <laughs> came up with a great how to get different results in Jesus. What were his results? Well, they, they persecuted him and then eventually killed him. And then denied him. But he had victory. Right. Why? He resurrected. And the same thing for you. So having a learning, so learning to adjust your expectations, sure. I think is good. Sure. I thought you, you had a great hiking story the other week. I thought that was great. See, so uh, for a lot of men, you're what my wife would say, we're going hiking. So I have to learn to adjust my expectations. Yeah. Because I can't adjust the fact that we're going hiking. So I, I have to change what I expect. So, you know, my original expectation is I'm going to be tired. It's going to be annoying. It's going to be... I, I, I have, okay. Uh, right? We, why did we stop hiking? Because we had cars. As soon as we got cars, the hike should have been over. Well, that's a really good point. Hiking, it wasn't hike. It was forced travel by yeah. foot. Yeah, your wife didn't go, hey, we're going to hike across America. So we invent cars so that we have to get out of our... We, I drove... To, hike. to a mountain so they could get out and walk. It doesn't make sense to a man. For a lot of men. Some men love it. I get it. But our oh my men... gosh, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> with all of us. So I changed my expectations, though. I have an expectation that we're going to have a great day with my wife. Have communicate. We're gonna have mm-hmm. some talking, get some fresh air. And that's what I do too. I, I adjust, just love being with my wife. I just adjust, and so as I adjust my expectations, yeah. Yeah. then I enjoy the thing. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. So having expectations in your life, I'm gonna have a great day. I get mm-hmm. it, but I'm gonna have speed bumps. God's in charge of my day. Everything doesn't go perfect. People get married. They expect that they're just gonna just lay around and, and butterflies are gonna fly over and they're gonna kiss and hug. Yeah, all the just time. gonna lay in bed all oh, day it's long. Be so just nice. making, when we get, it's when just we, a when we love get married, fest. honey, it's just gonna be so perfect. <laughs> it is. Right? It is. Flowers, chocolates. And then you had your first fight. Whoops. And then you had to go to work. And then you had to, like, the happen. And somebody like got the flu. And then... Sick. And they're yeah. mean during the flu. Oh, they're mean during the flu. Some are mean. Some are good. They didn't help enough during the flu. They didn't. And you have all of these things. But my expectations are is that we're still winning. Our relationship is growing. That's right. At, at the end. <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Marriage is great. Yeah. But they're... you have to have reasonable expectations. It's true. It's true. You have to. You have to. Uh, you have to recognize to keep expecting that. Uh, that even in the midst of when things look down, that you keep expecting that things are going to get better. That's good. That Elijah could have been like, well, okay, they didn't get the whole nation didn't turn to God in that event, but they're still going to come around. Of course, they're still coming around. I planted a seed. I don't. I don't know what God is doing, but I know that God is doing. And 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 so I'm just going to do what I do and expect God to do the supernatural. That's so good. They told you layoffs were coming, but you know what? You just keep your head down. You don't buy into all the griping and all the the criticism and all the negativity that's happening in that company. You just keep your head down. You say, well, even if they laid me off, God's got a better job for me. He must have something better than I can see. We always stay in a in a positive expectation that no matter how bad it looks, God's going to turn this around and I work it out that. for my good. And you look at people, and you know people are people. That's what I had to come to. People are people in, are people. People are people. They're into everybody's into what they can get sure. and what they can have. Sure. And even when they're talking, what they can get out of the conversation. And so you know people allow themselves to get hurt because they're expecting everyone to meet their needs. Everyone's going to like me. Yeah. And so when somebody doesn't like me, then I'm hurt. What something's wrong with me? People didn't like Jesus, as we said. No. So I got to realize that who I am is fine, and I'm going to go through life, and there are going to be people that don't like me. That's all right. I still like them. Yeah. I still love them. Yes. Right? People are going to hurt me. People are going to walk away. People are going to stab me in the back. It's not what I want. Yeah. But I know that in the end, my expectations are not in them. My expectations are what Christ is going to use me for in the world that he has placed me. That's right. And so my expectation isn't that everyone's going to love me. They're not. 
<laughs> I hate to tell you, they're not going to love you. But my expectation is that God loves me, and he's got, he's got the best plan for me, and he's raising me up, and he's going to demonstrate his power in me. He's marking me with the seal of his own ownership. He's anointing me. He gave me the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. He's guaranteed my future. So good. This is where my expectation lands, not in man, but my in God. My expectation's in God. That's right. It's not in man. Let's pray over your day. Go Father ahead. God, I just thank you, Lord, for our expectations are in you. Our hope is in you, and we don't defer those things. We don't defer our hope in the supernatural things, the eternal things. We're not deferring it, putting it off, allowing discouragement to take place, but instead we just keep declaring hope. We keep declaring the right expectations, Lord, that you are still on your throne. We thank you and praise you that you have a perfect day in mind for those as they're watching this, they're listening to this, Lord, that you're planning out a day of victory. There may be things that come at us, but greater are you that's within us than the the things that come at us are from this world. We thank you for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. A is the gap. And the gap is this. I'll put it on the screen so you can write this down. The distance between what you expect and what you get. There's a distance between what I expect. I expected my house to sell, and it didn't sell, and I lost my lot. There was a gap. There is a gap between when you show up, what I expect to have, and what I did have. This is what I expected when I got married. And 10 years later, here's what I have. This is what I saw since the time I was five in relationships. This is what I saw as an adult. And so we have our expectations of what we think that we should have. And then you have the reality of what we get. And there lies the gap. And that's why I have uh, blueprints and this super hot hat I can't wait to take home. And so I... Blueprints are, you know, we've been working on, on our, our new house since October, right? And we're moving on Tuesday. And you get plans. This is what we want. This is what we want this to look like and this to look like, right? You get the blueprints. Now, the contractor's job is to take the plans and replicate that. The, the disappointment happens in the gap between my plans and what is built or what happens. So if you decided you had plans to build a two-story Victorian 1,800 square foot house and you showed up and it was a one-story igloo, you would be, you would be disappointed. It's not even close. We're not even in the same really area of the United States here. What are we doing here? So you and I, since the time we were children, we have been putting plans together, just like we did for our house. Hey, this is what we want this room to look like. This is what we want, right? We, we begin to put the whole house together. We put all of our plans together. This is what your marriage is going to, this is what, life, when I'm in my 30s, going to look like, this is what having children is going to look like. And, the, and so we have all of these plans that we take with us. And then we show up, and there's the gap of reality gap. And the enemy knows this because he knows that, hey, they're going to get some things. So his goal is, is to get the wrong plans in you. See, if he can get you to show up with the wrong expectations, right? So Hollywood works very hard at showing us what relationships and what marriage and to get us a weird expectation into these things, Right? What do you expect since the time you were five? And I love Disney. I'll keep watching Disney. I think it's great. But they show a wrong perspective. They give wrong plans. Oh, here's the thing. You're troubled and things aren't going good. A prince is going to come sweep you off your feet, going to give you a kiss, and your whole life is going to be great from that point on. <laughs> Everything gets easy. Right? Everything. As soon as you get... So we, we show up as a teenager and, er, and a young youth, and all I have to do is if I can get a man into my life, and if I can get them to marry me, life's going to get easy, and it's going to be amazing, right? If we can just get married, right? Isn't this what new couples, oh, when we get married, it's going to be great. We're going to lay around, just live on love. We're going to snuggle and cuddle all day, hold hands, probably frolic, maybe two, three times a week. Be a lot of frolicking. Because this is, Disney stops at the kiss, right? We didn't get to see Snow White and the Prince Four years later, having the biggest three-hour fight because somebody didn't close the cheese up right in the refrigerator. 
Well, we didn't get to see that. We thought the struggle was find the man, and then there was no more struggle. So we show up to life, and the enemy has set us up for disappointment because if he knows he can get you disappointed in the reign of the person that God brought in your life, then he can keep you back from experiencing what you're supposed to experience in what God has brought to you in your life. It's the gap. A couple thumbs up. Share it. Share it and like it. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Amen. And don't forget about what's going on here at the church. We have Girls Night Out. Gino. Yeah. Gino. Yeah, the girls are getting together and having a big Christmas party. And the guys, I don't know what we're doing, but they're all going to have fun with a real talk cam. They're going to eat some food. You got, you got to check this out, livingwordevents.com. Don't forget about out. our candlelight service also. If you're in the area, it's, we got the, whatever, they come down from the ceiling and the things yeah. and the music. And yeah, the, they have the, the silks is what they call them. They, they do dance on the these uh, silky oh, rope things yeah. and they spin and I might do it. stuff. If you've never seen something like that, you know, you, you, you can come. It's free. It's a free event. Yeah. Obviously, our Christmas Eve service. Yeah. You would love this. Be Bring blessed. your whole family. We will see you tomorrow.